I closed the previous video asking you what type of derivative do you think this is. Let's read through our example once again. Pratam Mehta entered into a contract that obligates him to purchase 10,000 shares of Tesla Motor stock for $250 per share on March 25, 2016. Assume there were no upfront costs at the initiation of the contract. In the previous video, we said that forwards and futures are contracts for delivery of an asset in the future. And over here, we have one such contract. The asset to be delivered is Tesla stock, a financial asset. In the previous video, we referred to a delivery of gold, a physical asset. So this could either be a forward or a futures contract. If it is traded over the counter as a private contract between two parties, then it'd be a forward. If it is traded on an exchange, it'd be a futures. Let's assume that it's a forward contract, and with that, let's proceed with a more formal forward definition. A forward is a contract in which two parties agree that one party, the buyer, will purchase an underlying asset from the other party, the seller, at a specified date in the future, at a fixed price. And of course, both the date and price are agreed when the contract is signed. Remember that a forward is a private contract between two parties. The party that has agreed to buy is said to have taken a long position, and we can refer to that party as simply the long, meaning the party that has taken a long position. The party that has agreed to sell is said to have taken a short position, and in similar fashion, we can refer to that party as the short, meaning the party that has taken a short position. Bear in mind that this long and short position terminology is not just reserved for forwards, but you will see this in practice as well as we move on. Now I don't want you to confuse this short position with what is called short selling of securities. Although in certain respects the two share some similarities, they are not the same. And rest assured that I'll prepare a video to explain what short selling is. After that clarification, Let's revisit our example. And as you can see, I'm keeping the definition as well. In this example, Pratam Mehta has agreed to buy Tesla stock. Based on the terminology we just introduced, he has taken a long position. If Pratam has agreed to buy, then there must be another individual that has agreed to sell. And that other individual is the party on the other side of the contract. That party has taken a short position. Since there are only two sides, only two possible positions in a forward contract, and we express that Pratam has taken a long position, it goes without saying that the party on the other side has taken a short position. What I'm trying to say is that expressing this as well is redundant. Nevertheless, here I did so to make it perfectly clear since we are still in the early stages of our understanding of forward contracts. Now in this example, the underlying asset we refer to in the definition is Tesla Motor stock. The specified date that the two parties will transact in the future is March 25, 2016, and the fixed price they agreed at the initiation of the contract is $250 per share. Let's see in the next video what could motivate the creation of a forward contract.